much. I appreciate that. Let's take our Bibles, please, and turn to Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. And in just a moment, I was speaking with a number of our students the other day, and they were giving a testimony about some of the things that God's done in their life since they've been here. And then I said to them, we'd like for you to just come and take a minute or two, no more, but just take a couple minutes, and let's have you share that in chapel, all right? And I think that'd be a, something a little different to do, but also something that's going to encourage us. And I have a reason for it. I want you to look in Acts chapter 27. I'm going to begin reading in verse 14. And I want you to follow along as we come to this account that God has for us in his word in the life of the apostle Paul. And Paul is not a young man by this point in time. He's a seasoned man and he's a seasoned missionary and an apostle. And he's been through a lot. And now he's going to go through something else that's very dramatic as well. Look in chapter 27, verse 14. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurachlidon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clotta, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship. And fearing lest they should fall into, into the quicksands, strake sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lighten the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. I want you to make a note, if you would today, if you're marking some things down in your Bible or in a note taker's journal, I want you to write this statement down or this expression down. One man speaking with faith in God. One man speaking with faith in God can make a great difference. One man, one woman, one young person, one college student. You could put any, anyone in there, but one family member. Uh, one player on the ball team, one person in the group, wherever you are, one student in the classroom, one man speaking with faith in God can make the great difference. Now, I'm going to tell you, Paul had experienced something with God. And here you have this, I guess, famous story of these 276, I believe it is, that he mentions here who are on the ship and Paul, of course, is the one that everybody's eyes are on from the Christian perspective. I'm sure from the, if you were on the boat at that time and that day, they didn't think of Paul as the epicenter of anything that was going on. He was just another passenger who had to be on board to get to Rome because the legalities said that he had to be on the ship and had to be heading with these guys. He was the, the last thought in their mind. But here's one guy, and God did something in his heart. Now, amazingly, God appeared to him, sent an angel to bring a message. And, of course, God did that on a number of occasions in his word when necessary. He sent a messenger to say, this is the message that you need. And 
Paul could have kept that all to himself. He could have kept all that in. In fact, I imagine he could have thought, if God said, I'm going to live and everybody's going to live with me, then I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm going to sleep in peace. It's bad. It's dark. There's a tempest. It's been many days. We've done everything we can. Everybody's in despair. But if I know everything's going to be all right because God let me know that, then Paul could have almost just said, I'm just going to sleep on that and I'll be okay. But he decided he was going to do something. He decided he was going to open his mouth. And he decided he was going to let everybody else know the, what God had been doing in his heart, what God had showed him. And can I tell you this? There's some kind of a turn that you make in life, especially as a young person, where you start realizing, you know what? I am here not just for me to be blessed by God, not just for me to receive something from God, but I am here on this earth, even in this college, I am here not just to be blessed, but to be a blessing. You have to turn that corner in life. God will have to help you to turn that corner. It's not all about you and I, honestly. And it's not all about you and I just getting some, something from God and, hey, God's doing something in my life. It's about understanding God is doing something in me so that he can do something through me. Okay? That's maturing. That's growing as a Christian. I said to you something the other day, and I want to repeat it. I said to you last chapel, I said, your message is more powerful than you know. How many remember me talking about that at the end of chapel last time? Your message is more powerful than you know. And can I tell you more specifically what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the message you have about what God's doing in your life. God did something in Paul's heart. He gave him faith. He gave him promise. He gave him encouragement. He gave him an anchor. And now Paul stands up and says, I want everybody else to know, after a little old man rebuke, hey, guys, you should have listened to the old guy, all right? You shouldn't have let this ship go. But anyhow, after I've thrown that in, let me just tell you this. God has showed me something and I want you to know, I believe God. This is going to happen. God's working. You don't see God's hand, but I do. And I'm telling you, God is in this boat. God is working here. God's going to keep us. You know what? That made all the difference in the world. God is now using Paul as an instrument. And I'm, I'm, I want to make an emphasis today, especially when we have college days coming here in just a, two days. You know, we'll have so many people with us. We've had so many guests in the last couple of weeks, to be honest with you, but we have so many who have planned to be with us just for that time. I'm trying to tell you, you can say something about what God's doing in your life, and it's going to make, God can use that to make a tremendous, tremendous difference in somebody else's life. You know, when you speak to someone, it takes just a little extra, just a little bit more to make the greatest difference. Pastor taught us that, has taught us that for years. Just a little extra. For instance, someone may come visit here and you may say to them, because you're trying to be friendly or you're trying to just be a nice person, they may sit on the on the row that you do in chapel they may sit near you in a class and you might say hey how you doing nice to have you thanks for being here just a little extra what if you went a little further and you said where are you from great well can I tell you where I'm from I'm from wherever the state of you can name it hey let me just tell you since I came to crown Here's a couple things God's done in my life. He's taught me this, and he's taught me this, and I've gotten to experience this. And it's just been a blessing to me. Maybe God will lead you here one day. Who knows? Good to have you. That didn't take 20 seconds extra, but I want you to know, that's the, that's the kind of speaking with faith in God that people need to hear. That's somebody not just being nice. That's somebody saying, you know what? God has been doing something to me. Let me just share with you just a little bit of that. Here we go. And you're saying God is working, God is moving, God is helping. And now because of what God's done in you, what do you think that young person may be thinking? I know what they're thinking. They're thinking, you know, if God could work in this guy, maybe God can work in me. By the way, God may not even direct them here. That's up to the Lord. We leave that in God's hands. But I want people to know 
God is working in the hearts of young people. How are they going to know that unless young people are talking about what God's doing in their hearts? How would these sailors know what God had showed Paul if Paul wasn't willing to stand up and say, hey, I believe God, this is going to happen. You've got to be willing to open your mouth and share your message because God has made it so that your testimony has a power that is honestly more powerful in a sense than anybody else's because it's unique to you. It's what you have experienced personally with God. And when God has, has made himself known to you and revealed himself to you in a very personal way, mature enough and become you know, a, a mature enough Christian to understand God did that so that now you can share that with somebody else and be an encouragement and a blessing to somebody else.